Hey everybody, I've had a few questions about my workspace and how I have things set up where I paint. And so today I'm gonna give you a look at my studio and talk about some of those things. So here's a look at my workspace. I do my video filming and editing and painting all in this one room here. Over here I have a little easel where I can put some of my recent work and kind of look at it um, from a distance and I find that helpful sometimes. So here's kind of my office area, here's my painting area and if I get stuck on things sometimes I hop over onto the drum set. There's my junk corner where I put things that I don't know what to do with. So here is a stack of failed paintings you might say and if I finish a painting and I'm not really happy with it I'll put it in this pile over here and then I'll use the back of the paper to um, either try out brush marks or do value studies or sky studies or figure studies or anything like that. So this is my painting area and you'll notice I have these tripods around this is what I use to film my tutorials with. So over here I have my drafting table and I have my palette and my paints and everything off to the right. Um, this drafting table I get a lot of questions about. This is something I just ordered off of Amazon a few years ago. And if you're interested, I'll stick the link down below and you can check it out. But yeah, it's a wooden drafting table. Um, one thing I like about it is you can turn this little knob here and you can adjust the angle. And so if I want my workspace a little more flat, I can do that. If I want it a little more angled, I can do that as well. So that's something I like about it. Some people have questions about lighting, what type of lighting I have in my workspace. Well, for one thing, I have this big window here, which is helpful. So I get a lot of natural light in here during the day, but a lot of my painting time is at night. And up here, it's not a fancy light or anything, but I have a daylight bulb in this lamp. And I also have it um, diffused with this here, diffused just a little bit, because it just looks better on video that way. It's not such a harsh light. Uh, let's take a look at my palette here. Okay, so this is a John Pike palette. And um, what I like about it, a few things. First of all, it's pretty affordable. I think it's maybe $30, $35, something like that. It is plastic. Some people prefer to mix on some type of metal. But I like this plastic palette. And what I love about it, and the reason why I'm using it, is because this mix space is so large. And for the longest time, I was using a small metal palette. And um, I was painting, you know, a half sheet painting with a small metal palette. And when I really started to pay attention to painting values better and stronger paintings, I realized that I needed more mixing space. Plenty of wells for paint, but most importantly, really large mixing space. And the reason why you want this large mixing space is on your middle value washes where you are, are trying to paint one large shape, but you have changes in color and changes in value and texture. I find it so much easier to mix on this type of palette where you have more room, I can pre-mix some colors, I can have a few different brushes loaded up and ready to go because I have that much space on my palette. So again, that's the John Pike palette. If you're interested in that, I'll stick a link in the description um, below the video. So one thing you might notice if you've been painting for a while is that Obviously not all of your paintings turn out, but you might have paintings that are kind of in that in-between stage where it's not um, Maybe it didn't turn out exactly how you want Maybe it's you're not offering it for sale, but you might want to hang on to it and reference it in the future and uh, Maybe give it another shot or just maybe touch it up in the future And so I would end up with all these different stacks of paintings and I didn't know where to put them So I'm just gonna show you real quick. You have to pardon my my junky mess, but I wanted to show you how I organize my paintings. So I got a little thing like this with um, two sets of shells here. And so what it, it, this is good for storing quarter sheet paintings and that's, you know, this size here. 
And so um, I, I have a different system for paintings I'm interested in coming back to. If I take a course or a class and I want to keep all that class work together, I can put it on another shelf. Um, if I have, I have a shelf just full of value studies, if I want to refer back to those value studies. So it's not, again, it's not the best, most cleanest system, but I found that really helpful rather than just having a big stack of paintings that I would have to sort through. I could, you know, organize them in that way. Now, if I have paintings that I've finished that I want to enter into a show or I want to offer up for sale, I have another strategy over here for that. I got this nice little shelf here and I can put my pre-cut paper that's ready to go inside of there. If I'm offering the paintings for sale or if they're in a show, I have these different shelves that I can organize those paintings. And I like the size of this because it can also handle a half sheet painting really well versus a quarter sheet painting. Oh, one more thing I want to show you. This is a painting by Joseph Zbukvich that I was able to purchase at a workshop of his when I was first getting started in things. And I had a great experience learning from him and he was very encouraging to me. And to own this painting by him um, is a good reminder of that time. And also it's very inspiring. Sometimes I sit and look at it and think about his brushwork and how he approached the scene. And I think about the years of experience that went into this painting. So that was a look at my workspace. I hope that you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions about the gear that I'm using, feel free to leave comments and questions down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, how to avoid overworking your painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've gotten some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talked through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. And thank you for spending some time with me today. Keep pushing, keep moving forward, keep working at your craft, and I'll see you next time.